Hey folks, Duke CT here back once again with three things I gotta talk about. First thing, well, my new review show, The Last Reviewer Standing, will be up next week. And uh and what I'm gonna be doing what I am gonna be doing is going to be reviewing two rock movies and two John Cena movies. And they're tip of the for the anticipation anticipation of rock Versus Cena, WrestleMania 28, live in Miami, Florida, where I, I'm not going. You know, I get the feeling that WrestleMania 27 was basically a prologue. And don't get me wrong, I liked WrestleMania 20. I, I liked it. I was there. It was the first time I've ever been to WrestleMania. It was a great experience. I don't want to belittle that because I, I loved it. The people would, would not, I mean, meeting like some wrestlers, it was a great experience. But, man, I feel like it was just a part one. I mean, so it was like, honestly, it felt really average. Not something we were leaving WrestleMania. This WrestleMania, on the other hand, you already have confirmed Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus, at least to be on the card this time. You have Punk Jericho, you have Triple H, Taker, Hell in a Cell, and you got Rock Cena. Anything that could be negative on a car like Johnny Ace versus Teddy Long, I mean, that match, which will probably happen, or maybe not, I don't know. Maybe it'll just be a four teammate, which I have no idea what's going to happen to that match. But you know what? I don't care. But just those four matches there, uh, you, that, that is probably just alone could just really, just really sell the WrestleMania. Especially, you know, Punk and Jericho. I, I don't really care for Rock and Cena. Which, you know, I'll get into that, not into my review. I'll get into that on the next thing I'll be talking about. I'm going to be getting into the Duke CT Lounge, which the Duke CT Lounge is always live. On Friday, 6 p.m. I'm gonna be talking about that, and also, which I'm gonna take a little, um, a deep of a, you know, tell the show something more interesting. Um, you know, besides Rock and Cena, I'm gonna talk a little bit of video game action. So, you know, uh, video games. This one, the major release is happening. Uh, it's happening next week. Mass Effect 3, the long-awaited sequel to this sequel to Mass Effect 2, the end of a trilogy. Or the end of the series, which is not going to be the end of the series because it's kind of going to have spinoffs, uh, MMO, which a lot of people are saying was going to happen, a uh, movie is going to happen, which I just don't think it's going to work because honestly, it's the creators' content. Kind of, there's so many stories, so many things that can happen in this whole, um, the whole Mass Effect story and everything else. The entire Mass Effect story, you just can't do that in a movie, you know. It's a movie in itself, so I don't think it's going to work as a movie. But, you know, anyway, I'm going to be talking about Mass Effect 3 and honestly playing the demo. I really like the demo. I like the uh, multiplayer as well. Um, I'll be talking a bit about that. And if you want to join me in the conversation, remember, link in the description. Call, you can actually call in, and, then, and the phone number is down there as well. Remember, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, every Friday night here in the, uh, at, over there at TalkShoe.com. I hope you can join me. Anyway, <clears throat> and as for the third thing I'm going to be talking about, let's see. Hmm. This whole vlog, let me um, hmm. Think about this. Oh yes, then the third thing I'll be talking about. You know, uh, it's gonna be um, Monday Night Raw related, and honestly, I, I I gotta say this. You know, do you remember when the WWE were actually trying to focus on the tag division? And uh, no, no, and better yet, do you remember when Kofi Kingston said he wasn't gonna be an afterthought? Which to me, honestly, is much of a big crime here. To me, Kofi Kingston, um, I'm going to say the tag team stuff later on, and maybe uh, another, because we all know tag team vision sucks, but let's look at Kofi Kingston. 
Remember, he had that, you know, that debate and everything else. People were like, man, Kofi's going to do something. Heck, he pinned uh, the Miz and such. I'm like, we might do see something, uh, do something with Kofi, something positive, something that he might move up with the card. Instead, now he's in this makeshift random black guy team with our truth. Just and you know, it just feels like they're saying, Well, um, well, we can't get uh, Evan Bourne since he's still a suspension, so Kofi, you're gonna have to team with our truth. Instead of, I don't know, you know, pushing up for the Intercondo title or US title, something. I mean, it just seems to me I mean heck, uh, rumor has it's gonna be money in the bank. Why not put him in there? Why not put this guy money in the bank and have him win it? And have him do something? I, I mean, to me, Kofi has the ability to be something really special. And the WWE, for all intents and purposes, just keep, just for whatever reason, or just they don't see it. I, maybe he's doing something wrong backstage. Maybe he's, um, you, know, you know, he kicks puppies and uh, bitch slaps women backstage. I don't know. It, it, it just seems to me that when you have someone with that much talent, when you have someone with that much um, connectability, I mean, he does have connectability with the audience and such. People do like him. And he grew, I mean, he has gotten a lot better on the microphone uh, and everything else. He can set a, a pretty good promo. You have to wonder why are the WWE pushing behind him? And they need to. Since Orton has been, Orton, I, know, I think he's going to retire in the next two years because of injuries. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Cena's going to retire as well. Because honestly, when I do like Cena's working this hard, doing all the shows, and doing everything else, you don't think that's good. He's running himself ragged. So I guarantee you by 2013 or 14, you're going to see both maybe Orton. No, you're going to see Orton and Cena leave. And what's going to happen to WWE? I mean, sure, you got Punk, but... Who's going to face? Jericho? Well, Jericho's going to leave, probably doing Dance with the Stars again. Um, Ziggler? I like him, but he just seems to me he screams upper mid card. He hasn't made it to that next step. Um, Swagger? The forgettable champion? I mean, when's the last time he's defended that U.S. title and actually, you know, you know, I know he defended the U.S. championship against Justin Gabriel, but. I felt like I was a, that was just basically an extended squash match. He didn't really have anything. He, he didn't bring anything really substantial to um, to the U.S. Championship. He just basically a prop to get rid of. You know, just he was just used as a prop for Zack Ryder to lose the belt. So that's, that's in this case. Just have him. You know what they should have just done is stripped him of the championship. Just had a tournament or something. That would have made Jack Ryder get, get him over. And actually put him as a more dangerous threat and actually, you know, have people, you know, see him every week and actually have him defend the championship as well. You know, simple stuff. The same as Cody Rhodes and the Anaconda title. And don't get me wrong, I love Cody Rhodes, but the dude has just, he's just, I don't know what he's doing teasing the big show. Is he going to face him at Mania? Is, is Shaq going to be there in his corner? I don't know. Is he going to defend the Anaconda championship at any time this year? I don't know. It just seems to me Cody Rhodes said he's going to bring back prestige to the, to the Intercontinental Championship, and yet he hasn't done it damn thing. When's the last time he defended it? When's the last time he actually, you know, put it out, um, actually fought against um, a truly worthwhile competition in the mid card? No, oh, wait, it was Justin Gabriel again. Never mind. It just, yeah, and speaking of that, Justin Gabriel. That guy, to me, could be really old. I mean, he has that baby face. He could be that next high-flying guy. I mean, he should be someone like that. He should be exciting the crowd, and yet he's not really seen. He's just, you don't get much crowd reaction. He's not, you know, he's just there. And, and same as Heath Slater. Why did they need to break these two guys up? You know what? Just have them team up again. I think it would be best if those two guys have a tag team. They were um, pretty, you know, people were actually... There were honestly people who at least responded to him. And let's be honest, it gives both these guys something to do, which right now they're not doing anything, just being cannon fodder at this point. There's something wrong here, isn't there? And again, I keep harping at it that there's no real mid card. And it's basically biting them in the butt now. I, and when John Cena and, and John Cena and Randy Orton are leaving, 
uh, I mean, not leave, but are gone because of injuries and such. Way before they are, you know, <laughs> before they're be ready, they're gonna really feel the pinch because they're gonna be like, "Holy crap, none of, we, holy crap, we have our, all these young talent, but none of them are over." Hmm, I wonder why. Maybe we should have pushed them. Maybe we should have actually done something instead of you know, sitting there, um, you know, with our thumb up our butts and everything else. Are just sitting around doing this. Oh, I mean, <laughs> instead of you know actually pushing um, talent and actually using some good stories, instead of doing you know pushing the talent and giving them something meaningful, instead of just well, Kofi Kingston's there, we we'll just throw him in a few with Orton. That's gonna give him over. He gets buried, and Orton just yells stupid at him. You know, or you know, co or you have Jack Swagger with the U.S. Championship. Oh no, or, or worse, he wins the world title, beats Randy Orton clean, and then gets embarrassed by the Big Show and loses the title, in a four way, and then just completely is forgotten. You know that stuff. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised that uh, Daniel Bryan loses the title of Mania and he's completely forgotten to Sheamus, who was actually another forgotten champion. Because remember, Sheamus was actually a two-time WWE champion. And remember those reigns? His first one, he just beat up Evan Bourne a lot. And second one, and, and, and he lost it to Elimination Chamber after DQ, 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 um, over higher you know opponents at the higher mid-card. Mid no, no, at the mid, no, I mean, Sheamus only won against Evan Bourne and lost basically in DQ. No, one DQ mat one DQs against main eventers because that can bring you over. And then loses in Elimination Chamber, loses to Triple H and wins against Triple H thanks to a bit thanks to his rally baton he hits uh, Triple H with. Um, you know, back in two thousand what, ten? Yeah. Um, then he wants a title from the and everything else during the Nexus thing, and he well did stuff. He lost a title in a whole in a I don't know. He lost a title during Night of Champions that cluster F. Which by the way, they could have put him John Morrison for the championship belt. You know, instead of putting Chris Jericho after losing in two minutes, which to me was a complete waste of time. Remember that Chris Jericho was in a match only for two minutes, and instead of having that thing. Given to say John Morrison, you know, guy who was actually over, people actually wanted to see some young talent. You know, they give it to Chris Jericho and he doesn't do anything. Or even worse, he actually buried, you know, not buried, but he actually beat two, I mean, he actually beat the Hart Dynasty um, when they, I think, were, they were tag team champs and stuff in, um, in that cage match. <sighs> and speaking of them, well, I mean, and what they did to Air Harry Smith and um, Natalia with, and, um, Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd should be at least fighting for the Intercontinental title something. He should be doing something. And yet, you know, I would not be surprised he gets cut or get future endeavor because, well, the WWE can't find nothing for him. And yet they keep finding stuff for, for their big show, Arcane, or everything else. They keep finding stuff for, you know, these guys who are, who need, honestly, let's be real here. The WWE needs to start to needs to start cutting the old guys. You need to start getting rid of the, the you know, the, the, you know, waste of, I mean, you know what? I just thought like Mark Henry and stuff. Mark Henry, since he's getting injured and stuff, needs to retire or get cut. I'm sorry, this stuff needs to be said. You know what else we need to go? Uh, or at least get retooled or something? A bunch of the real. I'm sorry, he's not over. No one really cares about him. The people care more about his announcer than him. You know what? Repackage him or just cut Cut the cord. He needs to go. Big show. He needs to go. He's not over anymore. No one's really caring about him. Dude is a relic. He needs to leave. He needs to go. Kane, same thing. He's a relic. I mean, people like him, but let's be honest, he has the whole scene of rising with the hate and everything else. It just ring I mean, he just he was just there and not he and he just attacked tad teams. I don't know what you do with Kane. Everything Every possible direction you with this character has already been done and been done to death. You know what? It's time to cut the cord. He needs to go. Uh, you, you know, Taker, same thing. Um, you know, it just seems to me there's a lot of guys who need to go. Jericho, same thing. 
Uh, as much as I do love just Chris Jericho, but you need, I mean, we shouldn't be like, oh, we need Chris Jericho, save us, Chris Jericho. We need to have another guy up there. Where's the next guy? Where's the next people to stand up? And honestly, the only person the WWE has actually really pushed besides Cena and or just CM Punk. And Punk, as much as I love him, he can't do this stuff alone. You need, I mean, heck, no one can do it alone. Um, that's what made stuff like, say, the Attitude Era or the, not the, yeah, the Attitude Era, the New Generation, and all the other stuff. Any wrestling company, they need a bench, at least guys who are just somewhat over, someone that you can believe that can take on CM Punk, someone you can believe to take on, say, the guys like Daniel Bryan and everything else. It doesn't help when you have someone like Daniel Bryan beat Kofi Kingston in like two minutes in a squash match. You know, it doesn't help when you have these things. A good competitive match would have gone went a long way instead of just him getting squashed and him doing something with the Big Show. That's the real problem here. They are mortgaging. The WWE is mortgaging the long term for its short term, and they see it because there's no competition uh, for uh, for them right now in the whole wrestling business. But it's gonna hurt them in the long run because once those two guys, Cena and Orton. Which us be on the scene, Orton. While good, they're not. They don't get. Um, you know, while good, they're not even right there with the Rock and Stone Cold or anything else. Um, my personal opinion, because they're great. I, I think they're great, but not as. But they're not there. There. Maybe they need to go away. Need to appreciate them. But um, when they're gone. But when they're gone, which I think is going to happen in the next couple years, <laughs> you're going to see, folks. Dirty We are going to really be panicking. Heck, I'm not surprised they're going to stop panicking right now because there's they have no real mid-card. They have no real tag division. And their Divas division is a complete joke. Anyway, that's all I got to say here, folks. Big CT here. Peace and love. And don't worry. Um, <clears throat> like I said, remember, um, Duke CT Lounge. We'll be up this week, as always. We'll always be up on Fridays, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, remember, last review was standing. My new show will be up hopefully next week after I get everything else set up and all that good stuff. I mean, you know, school and my procrastination. I'm really going to start, um, you know, getting up on it. And trust me, it's going to be really, be, it's going to be really good as well. Because I really do like doing reviews. Anyway, that's all I got to say. Dixie to you. Like I said, Dixie to you. Peace, love. See y'all when I see y'all later.